So lo and behold, the Pure Base 500, which marks Be Quiet's first attempt at making a case to target the mid-tier pricing PC case market. How well does it stack up compared to competition in this price arena? And does it actually offer something that its competition doesn't quite get right? Let's take a look at all that stuff and address all those questions coming up. So let's dive right into the meat of this. What I'm gonna show you guys today is what is actually really good about this case, why I think it's actually priced right, what are the flaws about this case, which I think Be Quiet kinda of messed up on to be quite frank, and whether or not if I think that you guys should actually purchase this case or not, and really who the case is really marketed for or intended for. Because off the bat, I will tell you, not every person is gonna like a case like this and not because of its build quality or other things like that, but there's some quirky things about this case that I found while building in it, which even though it's pretty empty right now, but the main point I'm trying to make here is that they are targeting a very specific kind of customer, at least that's how I feel. Maybe other reviewers picked out some other things on this and I respect those and I think those are really well painted pictures of this actual case's capabilities. But anyways, let's jump into it. So number one, the one thing I really like about how this case is, it's overall build quality. Even though the front panel is made of plastic, it has a brushed aluminum type texture that makes it look very premium. And on top of that, it also does a good job at keeping your fingerprints away and keeping any kind of oily residue marks away and easy to wipe off if they do happen to get on there. Something that really is my pet peeve when you're building stuff with aluminum and actually brushed metal finishes is how easily they can collect fingerprints and get dirty while you're building it. The other thing, aside from the front panel, is the overall rest of the chassis of this actual case. It's built with a solid metal frame, which I believe is being used with aluminum materials. And overall, because of the size of the case and the lightweight aluminum that's being used, the case itself does not weigh a whole lot. So I think this is ideal for people who do plan to move the case around a lot, although it isn't a small form factor case, the weight of it, even after putting all your components inside is actually manageable. And it's not as heavy as some bigger cases like the thermal take one behind me. So it's definitely a good feature for those of you guys who are looking to do that. Now in terms of connectivity, there isn't a whole lot going on on top of the case. You really only get two USB 3.0 ports, a headphone jack and a microphone jack. While I would have liked to see them include a USB-C type jack, it's not really common for a lot of manufacturers to do include some of those type of ports in cases at this price point. I believe there is only one other alternative that does have that. And again, it comes down to personal preference if that case is actually worth it to you or if it looks like something that you're trying to do with your build. One more thing about design that I really like is the fact that they're giving you different color options and you're not confined to the typical black and orange. You do have three color choices in this bit case selection. You can go with a black, a white, or the metallic silver as seen here. The other thing you have an option for is choosing whether you want a tempered glass side or if you want to have just a enclosed panel altogether and that does impact pricing which we'll touch on in a bit. So moving into the internals of the case, let's talk about what sets this apart from some of the other cases that are out there. For starters, you do get two 140 millimeter fans that come included in the case, but they are rather low powered considering that they only go up to 900 RPM. So that means it's not really going to push a whole lot of air, but it will stay silent like the brand intends with the Be Quiet branding all together. So with that in mind, don't expect this to give you the most sufficient cooling that you might be looking for, but do keep in mind that it is going to make sure that your build is super quiet as the name intends. Not to be repetitive, but I can get the point of what Be Quiet is looking to do with this case. Throughout the case, you're also going to know on some of the panels that there is some sound dampening insulation being done. It's evident in the side panel, it's on the front panel as well, and it's even on the top panel depending on which filter you decide to use. If you choose to make a build that's completely silent, you would actually just use any of the parts that come pre-installed on it. However, if you're looking for something that offers a little bit more airflow in it, you can go ahead and swap out the mesh filter that comes in for the top, which is a good addition. Unfortunately, it doesn't make a whole lot of a difference in terms of cooling performance as noted by some of the other YouTubers. And I'll go ahead and link their reviews in this video down below so you guys can check that out as well. So that comes down to what other cool things are about this case. Like I mentioned, there's some pretty good stuff going on inside here that I liked a lot. So for starters, cable management on this case is amazing. It's actually really easy and you got plenty of space to do all your cable management gets tucked in on the side. However, like I also shared just a little while ago, the sound insulation foam that's used inside will limit the amount of space you actually have or the clearance you have between the cables getting tucked in and being neat. So you gotta make sure you're super neat and in the grooves, otherwise you might get a bulge on the side of your case, which is not gonna look really nice. In addition to that, installing the power supply is a breeze. You get to take out the back panel, 
hook it up to your PSU and just put that right back in, making it super, super easy. And that's another theme that I'm seeing with the case. They're starting to give you more toolless hardware so that you don't need to have a screwdriver on hand while you're doing some of the stuff, removing your hard drives, removing your panels, removing all these other different types of things that come standard on a PC case, which you would typically require either a flathead or a Phillips screwdriver. It just makes the job a lot easier, especially when you want to go in and change some parts on the fly or move something out that makes it easier. Now, in terms of radiator support, you really only have two options of ways of supporting it. You can either put your radiator at the top, which will only support up to a 280 millimeter radiator, or actually I believe a 240 millimeter radiator. And at the front, you can put up to a 360 mil radiator. However, it may get in the way of touching the hard disk drive enclosure that is on the bottom. But the good thing to note there is you do have an extra amount of space that you can push it over to. That way you have that amount of room to give it space so that it's actually doing a push-pull configuration or however you would like to set it up. Probably won't be the best case that I would pick to do water cooling unless you're using an all-in-one such as I mentioned. However, again, if you want to use tried using pumps and reservoirs and stuff like that, you might be able to do it, but this is not a case, and generally cases of this price range and this size is not something I would recommend anyone to go ahead and do that kind of build with. In addition to that, you have a lot of space to actually go in and install multiple SSDs. In total, you can put up to five SSDs on this case, which is pretty awesome. You've got two slots on the back of the motherboard tray. You've got two up here in the front as well, and a fifth can be used in the hard disk drive enclosure portion on the bottom of the case, which if you choose not to use any standard size hard disk drives, you can use that, but only one will fit on there, not two, unfortunately. However, I still think five SSD being able to be used in this case is actually pretty cool considering a lot of other cases don't give you that amount of slots to go ahead and configure all of that stuff. And to help keep all of this stuff clean, there are a number of dust filters included. So as I mentioned, you do get that option on the top of the panel, but you also get it in the front. And there's also a super long one that's the entire length of the case that's tucked in at the bottom. So this will do a pretty good job at making sure that your system stays clean and doesn't get super choked and have your heat sinks getting clogged up to increase thermals inside there. So as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, I thought that this case was really designed for a specific type of person or a specific type of use in mind. And I'm pretty comfortable and confident in saying this case is not really designed for a person who's looking to do a very flashy build, okay, having a ton of lights going on there and may really having the internals be the showcase of your build. So if you're looking for that flashy kind of stuff and if you're looking to have something that you wanna show people or show it off and just have look really fancy, I would really say that you should avoid this case altogether. It's not gonna get the job done. The side panel, while it is clear, typically I would say anyone who's trying to do that kind of stuff, you probably want a case similar to like the one that I have back there, which is glass panels all around. So you get a full view of everything that's going on on the inside if you're really trying to show what's on the inside of your build. So with that out of sight, let's move on to the next one. Who else this is not for? This is probably not going to be for the person who's looking to get extreme overclocking, extreme temperature control type builds, or someone that's really looking for an above the scene performance build. So I, I don't really know how to word this correctly, but essentially if you're trying to do a lot of cooling in this via air, Air cooling is gonna be the worst thing you can do in this case, because as you saw, they're already including two fans that are only 900 RPM, so even though you swap those out, because of all the sound insulation and the dust filters and whatnot, you're really confining the amount of airflow that can pass through this case, and you'll end up taking off a bunch of panels, which kind of just defeats the purpose of having a case like this in the first place. So who does it come down to being an adequate case for? And I think that really depends on what you're gonna be doing. I would suggest this case to anyone who's looking for a really, really silent build, is not really concerned about thermal temperature, because they're not going to be pushing their graphics card or their CPU in a direction that's meant to go and you know become over ambitious and achieving clock rates and whatnot. This is meant for someone who wants a quiet build or is putting in an area that they don't want a lot of noise in or maybe just someone who wants to do a lot of productivity work and is not really worried about those other nuances such as a gamer might be concerned about. So if you don't care about RGB, you want a quiet case, you don't really care too much about having water cooling builds aside from just getting an AIO, this is a great case for that price range and the build quality really just screams that. Now, with that aside and kind of pointing out all the stuff that makes sense that I believe, does it make sense at this price point? And this is an interesting thing because there really isn't one price point for this case. The case you see here as configured is $85, which kind of makes it a moot point at that price, to be very, very frank and honest with you guys. I honestly don't think, and I couldn't convince you to say, go out and spend $85 on this specific configuration when you can pick up the same exact case with a regular panel in black for $70. So there is a $15 difference just based on having a non window side and a different color. Now I understand the window panel may be adding a bit to the cost of being different, but the paint color is a little bit kind of shady for lack of a better word. 
I don't really agree that Be Quiet should have done different pricing. Maybe it's a cost structure. I'm not exactly sure what, how Be Quiet came up with the pricing, but I will say at the lower end pricing of $70, this is absolutely a worth it case for someone who's going for that silent build. And I think that maybe their strategy that if you want a case that's gonna be super quiet, you probably wanna go with one that doesn't have the glass panel and actually has another insulated side panel. For 70 bucks, it's gonna be cheaper for you as well, so you get that bonus. Now for 85 bucks, you wanna add $15 to that base price to get a different color and get that side panel to show off whatever it is that you'll have going on in the case. It may add some value for some of you guys. I personally don't think that that $15 is worth it to get a case like this, even though it's got a lot of different stuff going on here. I especially like the build design of this and the quality of all, as Be Quiet always makes really, really good quality products and they did not let down with this specific case either. So ultimately guys, it comes down to you. What are you looking to do? What are your PC needs? Based on that, check out this case if it makes sense for you. If you guys wanna go ahead and pick one up, I'll link it in the description below so you guys can check it out pick it up from amazon get it in two day shipping and of course guys if you have any questions let me know in the comment section below but if you've made it this far i appreciate you watching go ahead and smash that like button and if you're new to the channel hey consider subscribing because you'll be up to date with all the new content i'm putting out but anyways if you have any other questions let me know and until my next video i will see you guys later